Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our steady embedded systems design. We have switched over to the C language for our MSP430. And in this video, we're going to look at if else statements. <clears throat> okay, so let's jump right into CCS. If else statements are a very common and pretty simple uh, construct in C, but we care about how they're actually implemented in assembly language when we hit compile. Okay, so let's go into here and let's start a new project called uh, C if else. <clears throat> Make sure you got empty project. <clears throat> okay, and we're, we're just going to create a, a simple little program that is going to have an if else statement in it. Um, and since we don't have IO set up right now, let's just do something where let's create a for loop that'll cycle through some values and then we'll do an if else statement to check the value and we'll basically set a flag if if the the counter value is equal to two <clears throat> okay so let's set up a loop variable uh i and then let's create another one and we'll have this it'll kind of be like a flag okay so we're going to create this variable called it is two and this is zero if not two one if two Okay, so that's going to be how we <clears throat> do this. And what we'll do is we'll create a little, uh, we'll create a test structure, which is the for loop that'll count from zero up to, let's say, five. And then each time through, we'll check whether, you know, the loop variable <clears throat> is equal to two. And we'll cycle through. And since it increments by one, it'll only be true for one of the cases. So we need an infinite loop. So let's do our while one uh, loop. So that's going to get our main jump main. And that'll allow us to never hit that return. And then let's go ahead and let's do a for loop. So I'm going to go for, and then I've already got my loop variable i. So I'm going to say, come into this thing and say i is equal to zero. And that is redundant uh, from what we did above. But let's go, let's stay in this for loop as long as i is e less than five. And then let's go i is equal to i plus one. And what that's going to do is basically cycle it's going to execute five times and it'll go zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then repeat forever. Okay. And what I want to do is check the value of I using an if else statement. <clears throat> and so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say if, and you the if part, you give it a Boolean condition. So I'm going to say if, if I is equal to two, what I'd like you to do is set the flag, which is this variable we created called it is two and we'll set that equal to one and then otherwise if it's not equal to two we will say it is two is equal to zero okay all right so that's our whole program pretty simple um clean that up a little bit okay so that's our program pretty simple uh but like i say the the program itself is not that important it's more of what how does this get implemented on the msp430 so we don't want the optimizer to remove everything so go ahead into project settings and turn off optimization and go ahead and fire this up now a note on optimization we only turn it off when we're trying to look at this for the first time uh, once we get into real programs we won't turn off optimization we want the optimization on but we're just trying we want to see our program get implemented directly okay so here we are um, let me get a little room on here and move my project explorer over a touch. And then I've got, there's my code. I don't have a ton of space, but let's see. Okay. So there we go. All right. So we got all this stuff in here. Let's go ahead and set a breakpoint right here. Okay. And then we'll run to it and then we'll see what we have. Okay. So here we are, we're in the, we're in our disassembly. And again, if you don't have disassembly up, it's under view disassembly. If you don't have your variable viewer up, go view variables. And out of the gate, we have these two variables. Uh, again, they were put in the stack by the compiler. So they're dynamic allocation in the stack. And we are running down to this breakpoint right now. So we're about to do the instruction where we're gonna initialize i is equal to zero. And here's the instruction right here. So it's gonna do a clear. And it's using index addressing, using the stack pointer as the pointer to the location in the stack of where I is. So let's step that. And it cleared it off. Next thing it's going to do is it's going to clear this flag we created called it is two. Again, using a clear statement, index address, addressing offset of two in the stack pointer as the pointer. So we clear that, buddy. And now we're ready to do some for looping. 
okay? So the first thing we notice here is it's gonna do the compare, okay? And it's, it's gonna compare the loop variable to five, okay? And so it's got the, the loop variable pointers right here using index addressing, and then we're comparing it to five immediate addressing. And it compares it and t decides whether it needs to go into the for loop. And it says, hey, we are. We are going to go into this for loop. So then you come down here. And now we're going to do the if else. So the if else is basically going to do a compare. So the if i is equal to 2 is implemented using a compare of the variable against 2. And look at how it did it. It used index addressing in the stack pointer to point to where the value of i is in stack, and it compared it to the value two. Now, if that's true, it will be zero, right? Because remember, compare subtracts two from this value, the destination minus the source. So if it's true, it will be equal to zero, but the logic that the compiler have said is jump if not equal. Okay, so it's gonna do jump if not equal to this label it created, which happens to be down here, okay? <clears throat> and notice where, when I jump down to this label right here, this is going to be clear the loop variable, or excuse me, clear the flag that we set up. And so this first case is gonna absolutely jump down here and set that equal to zero. So let's go ahead and run it. So it takes the jump, went down, let me scroll back up. So it jumped down here and it then cleared it. Look at what it would have done if it didn't jump. It would have put a one into our flag, but we jumped over it. So it's, it's implementing code that's exactly like the way we learned about conditional jumps. And now we can watch our variables. So let's go ahead and step this again. And now it's coming through the next time through the loop. I is equal to one. Let's get this, let's get it. So it's gonna come down here and it gets down to the if it's equal to, let's get, get out of that for compare. So here's now the, the code for the if. I'm gonna compare it to two. And if it's equal to zero, that means I'm gonna execute this code right here where I set the flag as equal to one, but it's not this time. Uh, I is equal to one, so it's gonna, again, jump if not equal down to this piece of, or this statement and keep it at zero. So let's watch that, so boom, and it jumps over. And unfortunately it always scrolls down, so I wish it would just stay, like, stop scrolling, <laughs> but it scrolls and so you, it, it's not as clear like when we jump, you know, if it didn't scroll, anyway. So it does that again, i is equal to zero. Now here comes the case where i is equal to two. And so now we come through the conditional checking on the for loop, and now we're finally at this point right here. So it's gonna compare it to two, and notice that it is now equal to zero because it subtracted that. So the, the negative flag, uh, or excuse me, the, the zero flag is now asserted. And if you wanna see that, you come into the core registers and you expand the status register, and then you, down here, and you got yourself z is equal to one. So now this is not going to jump and it will finally execute this little segment of code right here, which is where you set our flag is equal to one. So watch this, I'm gonna do this. It doesn't jump, it goes ahead, we wanna have our variable on there, and it went ahead and set it back to one. So it's like, ah, we did it, okay? And now if we keep stepping this, it comes through and it's gonna do the if else looking at i is equal to three, or and it was not equal to two, so it set it back to zero. So you, this is really cool because it implements it just like we think uh, everything's working great. So we see how the for loop works, we see how the if else statement works, and then how does that while loop work again? Well, guess what? If I keep doing this, let's just keep doing, we're almost done here, so I'm gonna keep plunking through, and now this time, it's gonna increment, it's gonna increment i, it's equal to five, now it's gonna exit the for loop. So it's gonna exit the for loop, so I'm gonna hop all the way out, so this JL, and now what is it gonna do? Well, it, it just did it. it, it just jumped back up to that five. <laughs> well, basically what happened is, it did this jump always to CL1, and that is the beginning of our program, okay? So look at this, we have three constructs implemented in C, and they're really simple constructs. While loops are, are simple, for loops are simple, if else statements are simple, and we know how these should be created in assembly, and lo and behold, the compiler is doing exactly what we think it should be doing, okay? So this is fantastic. This is, gives us a good understanding of what these, these high-level programming constructs look like when you get down to the instruction level. Okay, congratulations, you did it. As always, remember, support my channel by subscribing, and see ya.